Welcome back. It is still the run-up. We're glad to know that you're still there. And just before we went on that quick break, we gave you a rundown of everything that you should be expecting on the show today. And uh, moving on, elections correspondent to periods of heightened media coverage and reporting. And with each political party wanting to lead the country, these issues become very unnecessary. And, you know, it, it gets really crazy at times like this. And then we begin to ask questions like, what is the place of the media, you know, in election coverage, in making sure that we have free and fair elections? And having this conversation with us this morning, I have live in the studio, uh, Lainka Adagun. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. My name is Adagun. <laughs> okay. And I, yeah. You just got what I used to get when I, I say my name is Nyamgul Agaji. And I'll, hmm? <laughs> what? what did you say? <laughs> anyway, welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. And also joining us. Uh, Virtually is Olubenga Judge. He is a journalist and a political analyst. Good morning, Olubenga. All right. Uh, let's start this way, Doctor Adagun. <laughs> first of all, who is a journalist? I think we need to answer that question first before we get into well, the I roles. Think, um, I think, um, by my understanding, and what actually I obtains, it must be somebody who was trained in the art of news reporting. Hmm. Well, you know, everything in this world is changing now. If there is nothing that, need, that, that does not change in the society, now it has changed itself. Now we have journalism at every uh, stri I mean, stratum of the society now. So much that the advent of social media has made just anybody that can put some sentences together to be a journalist. <laughs> And citizen, mm. citizen journalism, as good as it is, is as, com is as arrogated that power or that tag of a journalist on those who know nothing, next to nothing about journalism. With us now, to, you have in the society today, you know, people who call themselves bloggers. Bloggers whose blogs are full of spelling, grammatical, syntax errors, who still parade themselves as journalists. Unfortunately, there is no way you can regulate on who should be called the journalist or not. So we have that problem already. It is very difficult not to know who is the journalist. Okay, uh, Mr. Benga, uh, we have tried to, uh, Dr. Adagun has tried to define journalism. You know, uh, it's now like a generational thing. In one generation, <laughs> journalism had a definition. It's now it's more or less like it doesn't have a no, definition. No, it's, an it's not an all comma affair. Yeah. But what particular things should we be looking out for? You know, because some of these people may not even know that they're doing it wrongly and might really want to do it right. What are some of these qualities that need to be looked out for uh, or qualities that the person himself or herself needs to uh, develop to become a good journalist that can cover things as objectively as they should, especially as it leads up to election time. Maybe at this time, Benga cannot uh, answer that, but it's still... It's yes, it's a question. Uh, um, I, uh, you were asking them to, what do we expect them to be? Mm. Actually, is uh, the, 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 the media or the press is especially the fourth estate of the realm is not subservient to any other any other of the any of the other uh, realm estates judiciary legislature and executive it's supposed to be on it's supposed, it's supposed to be an independent observer yes and I think uh, before the independence we played that very played that up very much. I, I like the word you use supposed to be because <laughs> most of the questions coming after may be hanging around what is supposed to be and what is not, not right supposed now. Uh, well what is supposed to be is that um it's supposed to be an impartial observer and source of information about happenings in the polity. Yes. But don't forget, journalism like history thrives on objectivity. 
And that's something you can't get anywhere today. Objectivity, well, it depends on who's talking about it and what is happening. You want an objective reporting from a reporter in the media house that has not been paid for months and must not at the same time talk about any issue that will injure the ownership of his own medium. Mm. That puts your idea of objectivity, objectivity at stake. Mm. Okay, Benga is back. Benga, um, before you were Nigerianized, <laughs> <laughs> you were trying to say something. So please go on. Okay, the question is that what should we, the people, look out for? What should we, what should the people who are struggling to be journalists look out for in themselves and other people that they want to emulate? Because as we go into a sensitive period like the 2023 election, we need to know who, for instance, is the journalist so that when people, they blame the, the profession a lot, the media houses, you guys are not doing enough, this, but now we need to identify who really it's a journalist that is doing the work, and whoever is trying to do the work, we need to know the qualities that that person needs to possess, so that when the people are judging us, they should know that this one, okay, he doesn't qualify, so I cannot use whatever he's doing to condemn the rest. So what are these qualities? All right. Mm. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you very much. That seems to be uh, a, a kind of technical question, really, <laughs> especially because um, today, after in Nigeria, it's um, more difficult you know, to be a real journalist um, because of the prevailing challenges. Or, already you talked about the fact that the uh, journalists are no longer respected as they ought to be. I mean, um, the profession needs to be a profession of prestige, something that, you know, uh, we wanted to become, something we aspired to uh, in the past. Uh, but you see today, everybody, you know, wants to be a journalist. Not even um, been trying to do so. So first of all, I think uh, for what a journalist needs to do, uh, from those that we have read, we have seen in the past that we emulate, I realize that number one quality of a journalist is courage. You know, uh, you have to be somebody who is fearless, who is willing to challenge the status quo, who is willing to put in the work regardless of who talk is God. Uh, nevertheless, uh, this does not throw us up to a situation where we become irresponsible, like a lot of people do today. Because they realize today that most people say they are journalists, uh, they are just looking for content, you know, uh, to fill their social media pages uh, so that uh, viewers can come and it is all geared towards peculiar emotions. Yes, so uh, we are looking at a situation where a journalist, first of all, okay, I talked about courage. I think courage comes second. The first thing that somebody who wants to be a journalist that is recognized, that, you know, you have today is sincerity. You must be turning in your heart. To be, to be sincere, to love truth, and seek truth. You know, that's the first thing. Liars, uh, we continue to throw this profession into jeopardy. Liars, we continue to make it difficult, you know, for the profession to fill its role. So, yes, so you have to be truthful. You know, you have to seek truth. If you are a of truth, then most definitely um, the other ingredients which have we talked about courage, you know, will now come up. We cannot begin to talk about the fact that you also need to be courageous. Then, of course, um, the training, I mean, that is required is also a vital part of this whole thing. So, yes, I talk about seeking the truth, you know, in society. And courage. Wow. Well, I just don't know how, <clears throat> how, how you'll speak the truth and be courageous when 
he who pays the piper is dictating a different tune, like you, you, uh, uh, yes. you, you pointed one of, one out. Of, one of the problems of the, the Nigerian press now is that um, the ownership structure. And don't forget that the, the, the many, many, of the, many journalists are trying to make a name. Mm. Everybody mm. wants to be known. Like somebody who has spent all his life in the newspaper writing wants to go into broadcasting and start doing it so that everybody will see him as a, as a superstar. Mm. Then there, are, there is this thing called the broadcast code. He doesn't respect it because he's not coming from that perspective. Mm. Mm. And don't forget again, journalism became a very vital weapon in the last days of the military. Guerrilla journalism was the in thing. Yes, everybody must be healed. Unfortunately, we have returned to democracy since 1999. What we have is in the media is more of partisanship than politics. Even the political parties themselves are not what you should call them. How many of them have shadow cabinet for every government? How many of them, I mean, are run by members subscription? No. In the Second Republic, we had the European. Every member pays to be a member. To run, the, to, run, to run the party. But now those parties, what do we have? The money banks have hijacked it. Somebody has put his money somewhere. Yes, his heart must be there. You now complain that they are imposing candidates. Why would they not impose candidates? The parties are not owned by members. They are owned and controlled by select few. And in the same place, in the same way, the Nigerian press itself has lost its professional value. Because how many people are actually on the newsstands today? Everything is on the, on, on the web. Everybody wants to have a, I mean, somebody told me his work, he has an online tabloid. And what do you mean online tabloid? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> yes, that would tell you the confession in the profession itself. Mm. Everybody is trying to, be, like, like the Americans would say, wannabes. Everybody wants to be seen as doing it. But let's cast our mind back into the polity itself. Even the populace, the voters themselves, do they want to be enlightened or do they want to be empowered? Good okay. question. Do the people really people want do to people be themselves you have yeah. the, the press is fighting for? You can't fight for somebody who takes the light in being in being uh, enslaved. Enslaved. Yeah. Somebody's enjoying being enslaved because of the pecuniary gains. You are now trying to say this is this way. Some journalists today you must not say something about your candidates. And we're talking about history and journalism having the same focus of objectivity. How can you be objective when your own principles are the mortgage? Mm. Okay. You have journalists that cannot write anything that affects or in any way in, um, exposes the shortcomings of the owner, owners of their own year. Okay, so who, who is to blame now? I mean, most of it, the... It's a global thing. It's a global thing. Most of the media houses mm -hmm. that are big, mm -hmm. we're talking Nigeria now, so mm -hmm. let's yes, okay. Most of the media houses in Nigeria are owned by politicians, senators. Sure. These sure. are people who have interests. Sure. And when you're receiving your appointment letter, it will be said to you that our guy opened this place because of campaign. <laughs> so are you ready to work or not? And then you also have your integrity as a journalist. To Thank you very much. It's that word that is so, missing. Exactly. So integrity. How, who is to blame? How do you strike a balance? People are hungry. They need jobs to <laughs> take care of their family. And they have a principal who is breathing down their necks to write and put up uh, radio programs, TV shows, that would to be their own streamline needs. their own interests. Uh, so how do, because that is where we got it wrong in the first place, letting interest be cloud what should have been mm. very um, open, if I'm to use that word. So how do we get it right now? What should we put in place to make it right? Yeah, you just said it. Uh, let Benga uh, begin <laughs> answering this question. But first of all, uh, let me just say, uh, may the souls of those who have put in that all for the interest of the people, rest mm. in peace. I remember Delegiwa, for instance. I remember B Bagwada Kalto, that uh, we have his uh, bust in um, mm. the, the press center in Alausa was named after him. And so many other journalists that did not mind 
They even paid the, uh, the supreme price for the sake of the people. And like doctor said, the people also should be ready to <laughs> leave enslavement. But Benga, in the small time, okay, maybe Benga is not there anymore. But in the small time that we have, like she asked, what can we start to do? We're talking about. Yes, because what is 2023 is coming. 2023, what can we do to 20, salvage 20, 20, this? 2023 is like, um, it, it's there, yeah. it's here already. Mm. It's not that it's coming, it's here already. Mm. And unfortunately, it is not different from 2015, 2019. Even it's not different from 1999. Mm. In 1999, we came in with a lot of noise making about those we, we thought fought for the return of democracy. Yeah. Fine. What we got was a return to civil rule. It is the dramatic person that has changed. Yeah, I, re I really never thought about that. Yes. Civil rule it is, is it, not necessarily it's not, not, Civil rule does not mean democracy. Mm. Many of those who, who we used to call as pro-democracy or democratic activists of those days, mm. they are so intolerant of democratic values nowadays. If you criticize somebody and say, oh, because you, are, you don't belong to us. I mean, if I don't belong to, to you, it does not mean I'm against you. Mm -hmm. You have now had journalists that they are ready to make it clear that this is my page. I own the contents. Mm -hmm. And everything I say there must be, if you don't like it, piss off. And when you come to look at it, she mentioned the thing that is missing in all aspects of our polity, even among the political class, in the parties, even the party followers too, integrity. I remember somebody wanted to contest in one of the local governments in Lagos. When he got there, they said he was to meet them, party leaders, ah, my leader, my leader, my leader. When he got, <laughs> when he got to it, my leader, you know what he used who was scampering around the my leader, I told him, I said, are you coming to spend for us? Does he have money to spend? Oh. Must everything be money? We blame the political class for turning everything around. But the political class, does not do all the voting. Somebody comes into you, ah, I will ensure that my constituency will all vote for you. You can only speak about your own vote. It's good to be a secret ballot for God's sake. Mm -hmm. You can only speak about your own vote. You will not go there with everybody. And unfortunately, we have become so a society that have so we have even brought ourselves down. Everything is money, but it's not money. Sometimes the voters will start complaining. We vote for them. We now we cannot see them. Why do you want to see them? <laughs> they are paid for your votes. Maybe in some places, a t-shirt, a face cap, and 2,000 naira. Mm -hmm. And that, what, that's, your, that's your earning. That's your benefits of democracy or gains of democracy, let's say, for the next four years. And you are so daft that in the next four years, they come back and play the same game with you. Our mothers have become cheerleaders at political rallies. Mm. Political, political parties themselves don't know why they exist. Why would they know? They don't know because the group, the interest, the interest group there will tell you what they're after is they just want to corner power. All right. no, no, how many people are asking for, asking politicians for what is your manifesto? Ask some party members today. What is your party's stand on social issues? They don't know it. Uh, because we're, you know, we're, we're running short of time, there is a part of this conversation I want to really touch, and that is the part where journalists do not feel safe. <laughs> uh, uh, that, that question comes from, I think it was last week that President Salva Kiir was in the news mm -hmm. and he wore himself. And I just saw on social media yesterday that all the journalists that reported that uh, incident have been missing one after another hmm. and most of them have been found some of them have been found, found dead, dead. Mm. and this is not a strange story to journalists all over the well, world that's that should be expected in a, in in that in that kind of system as more of a military leadership well uh, it is more of a military leadership but then a journalist some was killed in america in america sometime in august because of a report that he made and we've heard journalists lose their lives in different countries in africa where i'm going with this conversation is we're looking at journalism and journalists and their roles that you know in the upcoming 2023 elections 
2023 election aside, there are people in this country who love their job. Mm -hmm. They want to really do it to the core, yes, but they are afraid for their life. And it has become a general issue for journalists all over the world. How do you, you know, how do you strike the difference between these core people who want to do their jobs, but they are afraid? And even when they go ahead to do it, they die. <laughs> they lose their life or they lose their jobs. You make a report and you're coming back to the office and you're, you're meeting your sack letter from your uh, principal because of a good job that you did that you should be applauded for. Please, make it make, it make sense. <laughs> make it easier for people I, I, I to think, understand. I think um, any, for any profession that has to do, deal with the public now, the media inclusive, is particularly in this part of the world, I'm not you said we can talk local. Everything is local now. It's like working in a minefield. We are talking of uh, insecurity. When a real journalist that sets to expose what's, rap, what's actually behind that in insecurity tries to be so professional and he wants to put his integrity, you find out that what he has just done is has just laid, has just signed his own death warrant. But then you can do it by, like I said, it's, a, it's, a, it's a work in the minefield. You have to be very careful. But it's not every time that God will send an angel to protect you. <laughs> you can protect yourself. Don't compromise your principles. And don't try to throw yourself before uh, a gun because you want to be a hero. The good heroes are there. Down, down, they, are, they are six feet down. <laughs> so, and we can still talk about it without being too blunt to attract the the, the theory of uh yeah the, 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 those you will think you are out uh, you are you are against them the political class actually i'll tell you this some of them wouldn't have been known wouldn't have been where they are hmm. without the journalists but because you are building a relationship Sometimes it is, it is uh, misconstrued as living in a, beg in a begging situation. You are begging for, for, uh, for acknowledgement or you are begging for empowerment. Mm. You can still do it, maintain your principle. Yes, objectivity is difficult to attain, but you can work closer to it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> without, uh, without injuring the, 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 the intention of the other party. And I think some of us journalists need to understand that um, being evasive, mm. being um, sometimes keeping to yourself or, you know, being yourself, mm. your organization has not paid you. That does not explain why you have to, I mean, compromise your principles and take patterns from people. And you need to see some journalists argue. Even on their page, they say, Super is my candidate. That's your business. That's your private business. Whoever is your candidate is your business. Keep it to yourself. You are entitled to it. But many of us are not seeing it that way. Maybe we, we should try to just, um, for some time, keep making attempts at objectivity. Okay. Uh, I, I understand Benga is still standing by. Uh, Benga, uh, sorry for that small uh, hitch that took you off. But we hear that there are plans by the National Assembly to uh, bring better welfare package for journalists. If you have insight to this, <laughs> can you please just let us know? I'm not saying it's going to affect you know, the way. It's not, huh? <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds like very good news, you know. Uh, but uh, you, I think we must also know that uh, the greater percentage of uh, Media entrepreneurs out there today are entrepreneurs. So they are private individuals mm -hmm. that are employed, you know, that have put their money into this business. So um, I think that's one of the things that even makes uh, the regulation a bit uh, difficult to do because you also want to see businesses thrive, uh, right? So, but uh, th there is no doubt. I think the responsibility of government basically is to make sure that the laws are in place and that there is a follow-up to ensure that these laws are being followed. So 
um, there is a media organization. We have the Broadcasting Code. We have uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Nigerian Broadcasting Commission that is in charge of regulating the activities of journalists mm -hmm. and media houses in the country. Uh, if all of these organizations um, can look at, for example, I have seen several media organizations being fined for saying certain things, you know, or for stirring up the quality with certain comments and all that. If they can do that, then they should also be concerned, you know, with um, the welfare of journalists. Uh, it is not today that we, we hear political statements, oh, journalists need this, or, you know, because you are happy. Uh, uh, or because you feel that, well, these people are doing our bidding at this time. What happens when the journalist actually decides to do his job? Will the statement, will they still be the same? Of course, we know the answer is no. So when the journalist is doing everything and it's in favor of the politicians, well, oh, just uh, lifesavers, they are good. But when it is not in their favor, when the stories, uh, you know, that they intend to cover, when they are being uncovered by journalists, then journalists are bad people. So I think, first of all, um, to show that the National Assembly, I mean, that movie is a good movie, sounds really good, but for, for us to know that, yes, the, the National Assembly, the political class, really mean business, I would like uh, that the media is properly regulated and that journalist uh, welfare is being taken care of. I think they should move ahead to make a law on that. And, you know, we are not lacking in laws in Nigeria, but they should also see that there is enforcement to these laws. So if uh, uh, a media a, a, a practitioner is supposed to earn at so and so, so at entrance level, this is what the person should get, and these are the other benefits that should come with uh, what this person is taking. I mean, all of that should be put into place. A lot of, um, the reason, you know, uh, I, I, I operate from Abuja, and sometimes you go out there, and you see microphones, you see all sorts of people everywhere, and you ask them, I'm a journalist. What the, <laughs> everybody is a journalist. <laughs> I, I, I understand that um, we are enterprising in Nigeria, mm -hmm. you know, we are entrepreneurs, uh, because the situation makes it so. I mean, the economic situation of the country. Uh, if these people are properly checked, if um, they have the skill, is it possible to have a law that says, okay, um, you have the skill, go and get this training uh, within this time frame. And if you are able to get this training, um, you know you are getting into a system where you are getting such and such and such rewards. Then we can begin to now trust the quality of reports that go out there. We can begin to trust the quality of, uh, of our news, you know, and media in general. But first of all, it begins with you. This time begins with the government. If we are sure that we really want um, to have a thriving media sector in Nigeria, then the right laws needs to be put into place. And for the right laws to be put into place, it has to be legislated. I'm happy, you know, that this move actually started with um, the National Assembly talking about uh, uh, wanting to increase the remuneration. It shouldn't end with those who work with government alone. It should be spread all across. Media entrepreneurs should be brought to the table, and they should be ha they should have these conversations with them. If you are going to do this, we won't stop you. We want uh, the sector to develop in Nigeria, but we want quality news. You know, some people don't even listen to Nigerian news because they believe it is shoddy. They believe <laughs> it is not well researched. How much do we put into research, for example? How much is available for a journalist? to put into research. I've had situations where somebody has to report, you know, or, or find a story in a particular place that he finds him. But, but there's no budget for him to run it. Is it security threats and all that now? This person is even willing to say, yeah, I think that the audio, the audio policy yeah. not, is... The audio has really gotten. So you need to, think, you need to adjust. He, he made his point mm. already. Yes. You know, he made it really. Any clear. law, any law, any law that cannot be uh, implemented, mm. it's no law. Mm. And like he said, Nigeria is a country where, where law. I mean, number the number of laws are not problems in Nigeria. It's the enforcement. <laughs> yes, have you ever go on the road? 
you will see that laws are just words of mouth. You see uh, a lot of lawlessness by those who are supposed to enforce laws themselves. So if those who are supposed to enforce it are lawless, what will you have in the society? <laughs> okay, uh, well, I, I think uh, this conversation um, has gone long. Uh, we are trying to just x-ray some of the challenges that uh, media houses, journalists especially, who write about uh, what is happening in the society face in an attempt to do what they're supposed to do. And uh, if we face this, that means that, okay, now everybody's talking about freedom of speech, uh, freedom of expression and all that. So everybody can bring news. But have some integrity while you're doing it. Have some some level of truthfulness while you're doing it. Have some level of objectivity while you're doing it. And like they say, if you see something, say something. But say it right. Don't say it because you're biased or anything. So whenever you blame us, the media houses, and us, the, the journalists, know also that you have a role to play. Because right now, we are all doing this work. For us who are professionals, maybe is to look at whatever is put out there and see the truth of it all. Because now everybody likes sensational news. Exactly. Everybody wants it sharp. The attention span has, has gone down so much. Uh, because of that, even the research, even if it's funded, a lot of people might not read the story that gives them the real picture to whatever is happening. But we will keep doing our best, hoping that you would do your best as well. 2023 is here, like Dr. said. And, well, I think, I think that's, <laughs> we just have to drop it there for now. We will keep doing what we are doing. Yeah. Because we have no other country but, but Nigeria. Nigeria. Thank you so much, Doctor, for coming on the show today. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. So we'll take a short break. And when we return, we return with the news. And then after the news, we conclude the show for today. Stay with us.